Hey folks, this is Red Falcon, and this is episode 9 of my Let's Play Evil Crime Mercenary series. In our last episode, I showed you how to make money very quickly by um, using the Pearl System trade route between uh, uh, Oasis Station and the Hidden Planet. And uh, I'd like to give you a few footnotes on that. Um, I discovered that uh, with a Fulcrum Drive... Um, um, I'm sorry, a C3, a C3 Fulcrum Drive. It takes about seven minutes to jump from Oasis Station to Pearl System. But with a level five Fulcrum Drive, or C5 Fulcrum Drive, it takes you only about five minutes. So it's really worth investing in that Fulcrum Drive early on to cut back on your time. Unless, of course, time's not an issue and you're like, you know, folding laundry or something while you're doing that, which is what I was doing. But anyway, um, a few other things to note. Um, the best-selling things are uh, quantum torpedoes and Exodus missiles, and anything anything around like two million credits is is a good thing to sell back. Now, if you wanted an easier way to do that, um, you, I could have waited until I had amassed um, 2.5 million credits, and then I would have been able to buy a fulcrum torpedo right off the bat, go to the Exodus system, double my money, go back buy two, and then basically exponentially increase my wealth. But, uh, anyway, that was my notes for that. Well, in this episode, we're going to go over um, crew management and explain the different type crew types, how, what they do, and how to keep your crew happy. Now, um, I've made a few upgrades to my ship since the last video, so I should probably go through those first. So let's go ahead and show you... Oh, I don't want to go to the hangar. Go to the shipyard. Okay, I'm now flying a Star Master frame. Turn that off there, and there she is right there. With uh, level 10 engine, uh, level 4 shields, level 3 cargo bay, a um, 1200 capacity fuel tank. I upgraded the wing system to 12 because I wanted to give the ship a little more maneuverability. Um, I've also. Um, maxed out my crew capacity and I'm going to show you why in a little bit um, six secondary hard points um, eight second uh, eight equipment hard points I'm sorry six equipment hard points I'm sorry it's early in the morning um, eight secondary weapon hard points and I believe that's 75 countermeasures so basically I went from having a light agile fighter to a heavy combat exploration craft, I guess you could call it that. <laughs> but it's definitely going to change the way we uh, um, do combat later on, and I'll get into that stuff later. But, uh, see, so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much what the ship looks like. And let me show you what uh, kind of equipment we have. So, uh, tractor beam, nothing fancy. I upgraded to a uh, C5 fulcrum drive. I have a really low-level repair system. As a matter of fact, can I upgrade that repair system? Actually, I can. Hold on a minute. Let me upgrade that repair system. There we go. Repair system C3. There we go. Sell back the old one. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've got an afterburner drive. Because the ship is heavier, I wanted to have the ability to um, <clears throat> you know, change direction relatively quickly. Um, an X5 shield boost, and of course I just upgraded the repair system, and I believe we have, I believe I saw a cannon relay system, yeah, there's a cannon relay system, let's go ahead and put that on there too, that'll double our um, weapon capacity, um, also um, I'm carrying a phantom particle cannon, and uh, just a, a low level class 5 um, laser, so nothing fancy. And I also have a full complement of Exodus missiles, because I like Exodus missiles. They're cheap, well, relatively speaking, they're pretty cheap, and they're very effective. Oh, what do we have here? Let me make sure there's anything in here. Okay, so there's nothing here I can do. Okay, so let's go and talk about crew management. Okay, so you go to the crew management section, and there are four crew... Um, crew member types. You have navigators, which um, 
navigators, in addition to increasing your radar capacity, it, it widens the radar. They also uh, make sure that the plot, the jump points that you're plotting are safe. I haven't tested this myself, but I'm pretty sure they would prevent you from jumping into atmosphere and stuff like that. Weapon ops. They um, increase your weapon efficiency, and I believe they give you a slight damage um, increase too. Either way, they're good to have around. Science Ops. Now, you explorers are really going to like Science Ops. These guys give you um, waypoint information, uh, points of interest, even if they're not marked or, or uh, charted. So, uh, for example, um, if you're flying by an asteroid field, they'll tell you if there are good minerals in the asteroid field. If you're just flying in a sector, they'll tell you if there are any um, cargo containers laying around, and they'll actually give you a pitch and a heading that you can... Um, follow. They're just really handy to ha have around all, all around. And there's a, a fourth type, they're called engineer. And an engineer increases the repair rate of your subsystems and your hull. Um, the only requirement is you have to have a repair system, which we just got. So, And I don't see one here, but we can go ahead and hire a navigator, a weapon ops, and a science ops. So um, there are different statistics here you want to look at. So this is their name, MMA, well, their initials really. Their trade, obviously, tells you what they do. Skill. Now the skill goes from 0 to 100. Um, this just shows how effective they are at their job. So um, a science ops that has a higher skill, like say 55, he'll, most of the time he'll show you points of interest. While with one with 100, he'll almost always show you um, points of interest. I'm not sure how the uh, skills directly relate to the uh, statistics, statistic modifiers, so I don't know that, but higher the better, basically. Now, this is loyalty. In some cases, loyalty is more important than their skill level, because their loyalty is, um, it's also from 0 to 100. Um, their loyalty is directly proportional to how much you pay them, and uh, how many missions you complete, and how many successful contracts you complete. And basically, a low loyalty means they have a higher chance of leaving your ship when you dock. Now, there's two trains of thought here. One, you could get someone with a high skill, but usually have a low loyalty. So, if you're planning on being in deep space a lot, and you're not going to dock for a while, that's probably a good strategy because you can build up their loyalty over time. The other, the flip side of that is to get someone with a high loyalty with a low skill. So high loyalty, you can get them to 100% faster, and you won't have to pay them nearly as much as you would someone with a loyal, royal loyalty. But on the other hand, they, they need time to develop their skills. And as their skills go up, they're going to want more money. So there's two, two um, trains of thought there. So let's, we're going to go ahead and hire these guys. So hire the navigator. We're going to hire the weapon ops and the science ops. Okay, so these are the available crew members for hire. These are the current crew members. As um, we saw before, I can have a limit of five. And I'm going to get to this guy later. So we have... Um, once we hire them, it shows you how much we pay them. Down here, we got the crew wage profile. The cycle, it counts down from 100. When that reaches zero, they get paid. Simple as that. Um, the fair wage is located right here. That's the, uh, that's the uh, credit amount where they will not lose loyalty based on pay. And if you pay them more than that, they'll, uh, they'll increase their loyalty. If you pay them double their fair wage, you get like, I think it's like their loyalty goes up 20% every cycle or something really ridiculous like that. But if you pay them below the fair wage, they'll, um, their loyalty will go down. So we can, we can match it, match it to their uh, fair wage. And I'm going to go ahead and, um, I'm going to go ahead and double their, uh, double their wage here. Just because I got plenty of money, I'm not too worried about that. I'm mostly concerned with keeping these people on my ship. So there we go. Oh, oh. 
bump it up one more. There we go. Now he's getting paid double. When this counts down, he should actually be at 100% loyalty, so we'll have to check back on that later. And we'll do the same with this guy. And... Yeah, you just hold down the button and it goes up by increments of 50. I don't remember if there was an easier way to do this, so... Yeah, we're going to do this the hard way. <laughs> now keep in mind, you'll want to periodically come back and check this because... Um, when their skill goes up, they're going to expect to get paid more, so you're going to have to come in here and tweak a few things. So, it's good just, I don't know, maybe every time you dock, take a look at your crew management and see how things are going. Alright, and this guy, uh, we'll go ahead and put him up to like, I don't know, 1800? Seems like a good, uh, we'll go ahead and give him a full 2000, sure, why not. There we go. Alright, anyway. Um, so we need to find a engineer. And uh, I guess now would be a good time to go over um, passengers. So, uh, as you can see, this guy is not a crew member. Um, he has the board option instead of the higher option. Um, basically, um, if you have room in your ship for crew, you can take people on your ship and transport them to other stations. Um, for a uh, small amount, and the uh, greater the distance you travel, the higher their pay is going to be. On the flip side of that, though, I think it's every f minute or two minutes or so, um, they go down by 10%. So it's you have incentive to get them to their sh uh, destination as quickly as possible. So this guy wants to go to Outpost 5 in Sector 2.0.0 minus one, so we're going to go ahead and board him. Docking track to be disengaged. And we're going to leave immediately. Okay, so outpost five. Alright. Outpost... I think that's... No. Oh, here we go. There's outpost five. All right, we're gonna make sure we got neutral pitch and we're heading in the right direction. Hit the fulcrum drive, <clears throat> and I love having a uh, C5 fulcrum drive. It makes my life so much easier. All right, and we're just gonna okay. Passengers in. All right, we're gonna go ahead and oh, and right up here, my science officer has located valuable asteroids. So if we wanted to, we could go over there and um, take a look. All right, let's see. And um, passenger delivered. We got our pay. So he didn't actually, um, we didn't actually lose any money from him. So um, we were really quick about getting over here. All right, so let's go over here and see if they have an engineer for hire. Nope, just the science ops. And 34, loyalty, yeah. He's actually not much, he's not better than what we have now. Don't and I don't remember... Disengaged. I don't remember if their skills based on... How long they're on your ship, or how much they do their job. That I'm not sure of. Ooh, what's this? Let's take a look at this. It looks interesting. Containers detected in the sector. All right. Um, heading to. Hey, get back here. Heading 253, which I guess is right about there, pitch 1. Okay, well here's a big asteroid. 
chapter. If we can get anything from it. Oops. Let's move up a little bit. Cause yeah, this asteroid's um actually just uh just highlighted and sitting here on the map. Okay, are we getting anything from this? I'm not actually getting anything from this. Switch into IDS mode. Take a look at this thing. I guess we can try to find that, uh... <clears throat> See, I guess it'd be right there. Alright, we'll keep your eyes open for any containers. So I'm heading in the wrong direction. My multiplier here. Well, you guys were asking for more exploration stuff, so I guess this counts, right? Switcher in IDS mode. See if we can see anything. Well, this is a big rock. Okay. But you guys get the idea, so it's it's might actually be inside this rock, to be honest. It's a big asteroid. What's this? <clears throat> oh, by the way, that, uh, afterburner drive. It uh, uses your ship's energy instead of fuel to hit your afterburner. Which could be very useful in a combat situation to uh, preserve your... Uh, uh, fuel. this thing is, but... It's just sitting here. <clears throat> Alright, let's go ahead and dock at this outpost. So I can get my engineer.
Well, assuming there's an engineer there anyway. Okay, you know, it really wasn't necessary to jump to something that close, but... Eh, oh well. <clears throat> okay, the management. Please have an engineer. Wow, okay, no one seems to have an engineer on this planet. What's up with that? Navigator, science ops, weapons ops. Hmm. Okay, well... We've got a little time. I guess we can try to find that, um... That asteroid. Uh, let's see. How do I flip this thing? Alright. <clears throat> I'm determined to find that, uh, that crate. It's free stuff. Can't go wrong with free stuff. But I think my original assumption was right. It's probably inside the, uh, asteroid. Oh, is that an opening? I think that might be an opening. We will see. Might be like a pirate stash or something. I don't think that's an opening. Nope, definitely not an opening. Alright, well... Here we go. I got an above view. like there's an opening Oops hmm. Oh and for those that don't know I'm holding a uh, page up to look right and uh, insert looks left home looks above and N looks behind you. I covered that in like the first video, but some people need a refresher. I'm also anticipating questions in the comments. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely inside this rock somewhere. How we get into it, I don't know. Yeah, I don't see... <clears throat> I mean, I guess that could be the opening. Like 
What is that? You really got me. I, I... Yeah, that's that, uh... That's what I thought was an opening. Maybe my ship's too big to get in there. Yeah, I think I'm actually too big to get in there. <clears throat> well, let's see. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. So this is how you get into this thing. Bit of a tight squeeze, though, but... Alright. I want to be in IDS mode for this. Now, I can't tell if that's... Like, darkness, or... A wall. Ah, here we go. Ah, so we are in a cave. How about that? And see, this is why I love science ops. They, uh, they give you opportunities to see stuff like this. So yeah, this is like a bonus uh, tutorial. Oh, this is really cool. Seems bigger on the inside, though. Must be like a TARDIS asteroid or something. Now, if you really want to be a pro, fly in here using uh, ID uh, inertial. Which isn't really that hard. You just have to anticipate. Oh, and the, uh, the ship's forward floodlights came on automatically when I entered in here, so you don't have to worry about that. And the video's running a little over, but I think that's alright. Where is that crate? I'm interested to see what's in this crate, so I hope you guys are uh, <laughs> are staying with me for this. Well, it is it is pitch black in here. The floodlights are only on the front of the ship, so you'd have to actually uh, maneuver using inertial just to see around. Alright, it's in here somewhere. Should be, according to the radar, it should be right in front of me. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I don't see it. be straight up. There was another passageway um, um, I saw earlier. Okay. Well, oh, 
had I known about this earlier, I would have done a separate tutorial about spelunking. So... But, you can see how useful the uh, science ops crew member is for finding places like this. I'm gonna actually going to cut out right now. Um, when I find that crate, I'm going to come back. So. Okay, I'm back, and I think I found it. Looks like there's some wreckage inside this uh, asteroid. And I'm just trying to... See if I can... I can't reach it. Wow, am I actually too big to fit in here? Looks like I've hit an invisible wall or something. see uh okay well anyway there uh yeah, there's some wreckage in here and there's probably a crate in here somewhere so if you guys want to go explore that feel free but I'm gonna end the episode here thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode thought it was helpful or uh, um, anything like that, please uh, click the like button and leave a comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.